welcome to my channel, The Independent Pianist, the channel about piano repertoire and performance. I'm your host and performer, Cole Anderson. If you like what I'm doing in these videos, please be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And also, please consider making a donation to my Patreon account, which is linked in the description below. So the first piece that we are going to talk about is Granados's Valsis Poeticos. This set of pieces was probably written in the late 1880s, around 1886 to 87. And at the time, Granados had just left his native Spain to go and study in France. So the piece is structured as a series of seven waltzes. These seven waltzes are bookended by two dances that are not waltzes. At the beginning, there is an energetic march-like movement, which is full of all kinds of effects that call to mind the Spanish guitar and the percussive sounds of Spanish dance. And then at the end, after waltz number seven, there is a wild, whirling closing number. Then the first waltz is reprised to close off the piece with its gently nostalgic mood. The idea of joining a series of shorter dance movements into a larger whole is a very old tradition. In print, it goes back at least to the 17th century. Famous examples of stylized dance suites abound throughout musical history. One need only think of the suites of Bach, Handel, Rameau, and Couperin, all the way up to more recent examples like Havel's Tombeau de Couperin and the jazz suites of Duke Ellington. Granados had a very specific Viennese waltz tradition in mind when he wrote this collection, though. One that perhaps could be traced from Franz Schubert in the early decades of the 19th century all the way to Johann Strauss Jr., who was still composing at the time this piece was written. Along the way, many composers wrote pieces that were inspired by this style of waltz composition, notably Brahms in his set of waltzes for the piano. But the one above all that Granados probably had in mind was Schumann's Opus 2, which is called Papillon. Uh, Papillon is French for butterflies, and the piece is a series of mostly waltzes that are supposed to paint a ballroom scene from a German romantic novel by Jean-Paul Richter. So Papillon also starts with a waltz that is strikingly similar to the first waltz in the Valses Poeticos. <laughs> And like in this piece, it also comes back at the end to round off the piece. The Valses Poeticos, however, is much more artless and uncomplicated than Schumann's piece. Uh, in the Papillon, the first waltz comes back in an entirely new form, fragmented and dreamlike, whereas Granados is much more direct. He just reprises the waltz exactly at the end. And several of the other waltzes also have a very distinctive Schumann sound particularly the middle part of number three, which to me seems to resemble the first part of the Valse Allemande from Schumann's Carnival, Opus 9. <laughs> In turn, Schumann's idea of stringing together a collection of waltzes like this obviously was inspired by Schubert. Schubert wrote many collections of short dances, a large number of which are strikingly beautiful and original. This influence also comes through in these valses, particularly in number six, which strongly resembles some of the lovely, wistfully nostalgic valses sentimental that Schubert was famous for.
Granados may also have had Liszt and his nine Soirée de Vienne in mind when he wrote this piece. In the Soirée de Vienne, Liszt strung together uh, a series of Schubert waltzes in a much more cohesive way than the originals by introducing transitions and virtuoso introductions and codas. So it's very similar, actually, to the valses poeticos. Uh, no one could write a waltz in Europe in the 1880s without owing some debt to Strauss as well, and Granados was no exception. In particular, I perceive a debt to Strauss in the wonderfully suave melody and gently nostalgic harmonies of waltz number five. Granados specifically notes some push-pull effects with the rhythm, which is also highly reminiscent of the way certain Strauss waltzes are performed. Mm -hmm. 